The last Mitsubishi Express sold in Australia looked like a Kelvinator fridge on wheels. That was then, this is now. Meet the new Renault Tra <laughs> Sorry, Mitsubishi Express. If you're wondering why this new Mitsubishi van looks like a Renault Traffic, that's because, well, it is a Renault Traffic, just with a different badge and grille. The new Mitsubishi is more expensive than the Renault, but it comes with a better warranty, five years versus three, and the cap price servicing is pretty good as well, 250 bucks a year for the first three years, and that includes roadside assistance too. It's available in two sizes, short wheelbase and long wheelbase, the latter adding $2,000 to the price. The short wheelbase model has 5.2 cubic metres of cargo space, the long wheelbase offers 6 cubic metres. That's enough room to fit a pallet between the wheel arches, and there's a full-size spare wheel underneath as well. There are plenty of tie-down points in the van, I count 6 on the walls, 8 on the floor, so it's easy to secure your cargo. Plus, there's a load-through area here that is currently blocked by this optional cage. And out the back, there's a 12-volt socket, so you can plug in your accessories back there. All models come with sliding doors on both sides to improve loading. And the big barn-style rear doors even allow for forklift access. Not surprisingly, the cabin is exactly the same as the Renault. It's fairly spartan and basic. You won't find Apple CarPlay here, but the heating cooling controls work well. The stereo has Bluetooth streaming for your phone and there's two USB ports. There's a cruise control function, the buttons of which are on the steering wheel. Drivers will appreciate the storage areas for paperwork and clipboards. And there's plenty of beverage holders too. It's a practical cabin, but the seats are good too. They're supportive, but the cushions are really comfortable too. And you've got height adjusts and even lumbar adjusts, while the controls are simple, but effective. You can choose between two litre and 1.6 litre turbo diesel engines, and I'm driving the bigger two litre version at the moment. There are two gearbox options for the van, a six-speed manual or a six-speed dual-clutch automatic. You'll pay an extra $4,000 for the automatic, but it adds automatic wipers and automatic headlights, which help make life a little bit easier. Driver ergonomics and comfort are two of the hallmarks of this vehicle. If you're gonna spend lots of time in your van, you could do a lot worse than this. And the elevated seats deliver great vision too. I really like the steering in this van. It makes it easy to get around and it has a surprisingly tight turning circle too. So you're never gonna be stuck in tricky situations. Engine response from the two liter is pretty good. It's got plenty of go, even when there's a couple of hundred kgs in the back. It sits pretty flat on the road and is really easy to drive. It's a good setup and a big part of that is the gearbox too. It's a dual clutch jobby so it's pretty quick to shift. The brakes aren't too bad but I really like the long soft brake pedal which means you can modulate it really gently which is good when you've got fragile cargo in the back. You don't want to smash things around. I've got a 200 kilogram load in the back and the suspension does a decent job of keeping that precious cargo from jostling around. Like the Renault, this vehicle has a substandard three-star in-cap safety rating. It does have five airbags, but it doesn't have autonomous emergency braking, which is a key safety system these days. All models have rear parking sensors, but auto versions also get a very good reversing camera with a wide angle view. Overall, the Mitsubishi Express doesn't really do anything special and it lacks the safety equipment of its newer rivals, like the Toyota Hiace. But it's got very good comfort levels, a strong warranty, and a flexible cargo area, which could see it match and even overtake the Renault traffic in the segment.